and hi everyone this is Paulo from F1 virtual again uh, we are going to, to to show today the second part of the Grand Prix tutorial video if you have been watching earlier I was making the video without my, my microphone but now everything should be okay and we're going to go over through, through today's lessons again so we can so we don't lose anything then after all is done I can go and and delete the old video okay so what we're going to do today uh, let's open our our Montreal GP4 again and remember the, in the last in the last part in the last video we change few objects we changed a few textures we cannot see them here right now because I am remaking this video so I had to to revert all the changes I, I made so I can can show that them again but uh, anyway you can go back to the to the part one video and and check the the basic operations that are moving objects and changing textures so what I'm going to do today is to to show a, a bit more of the basic object modifications you can make so for example let's take let's take this this tree right here now we have already talked about the the move button which is f6 f6 on the keyboard and right next to it we have the rotate button rotate here it is uh, which is also key F7 on the keyboard and the scale which is F8 so these are pretty self-explanatory on, on rotate I can rotate the object and on scale I can make the object bigger or smaller then you can rotate uh, on different axes for example right here I'm selected the Z axis which is the, the vertical axis so uh, when I select the Z, I can rotate the object on the, the vertical plane. I can also rotate, for example, on the X plane, on the X coordinate, and on the Y coordinate. And the same goes for scale. And uh, I'm doing right here, and I hold the, the left mouse button so I can make the the scale operation I can for example not uh, not scale on the z-axis so it will stay with the same the same height it changes only on the on the x and y coordinates or even only one of them and you can do the same for a move uh, as well for example if I can if I choose only the, the x-axis, it moves only on that direction. Oh, these are the, the other basic uh, object modifications that we can make. And now we're going to, to create new objects. The GP4 Builder has a few basic objects, simple objects that you can create. Uh, we have only done uh, modifications to ob objects that already existed so let's try and create a new object first let's create a new object based based on an object that already exists for example uh, here on the, the approach to turn one on this on this track we have a brake marker for 200 meters we have a brake marker for 100 meters uh, let's say I want a brake marker for 50 meters, which is just the same as the, the as the other one. So there is a very quick and easy way to do that. So let's select this, this object right here. It's called brake marker 65, and go to Edit menu, duplicate, or Control D on the keyboard. So what happened here? Remember the, the original object was the 65 and GP4 Builder has created 
a exact copy of this object it's called now break marker 66 with which if I move it and you can see that it's a different object the original one is still here so let's use this the, the basic operations that we we have already learned to place it on the the correct position no, we don't want to, to make everything uh, too, too exact right here, so let's put somewhere between somewhere halfway point don't know if that's right or not but for us it's, it's gotta be enough, maybe a little more ahead I can choose to leave it here if I want it, so, but it is it's crossing that one, that one sign here, the advertisement sign, over here it looks, looks a little better. Then again, we can, as we saw last video again, you can just open the object and open the, the texture browser we can change the textures uh, thankfully we already have a 50 meter texture right here it's used on other parts of the track and somehow it's 200 meter around here I don't know why is that it was 200 meter back here uh, yes it was not Yeah, it's 100 on one side, 200 on another side. Let's change this one as well, so it's it looks correct. A100, and select object, and let's change this one here. Now the texture went to the favorites since I selected it. Okay, now if you really pay attention, there is a small difference. There is this this greenish part around here. Let's try and select it. Here. It's a different object. There is the, the break marker, small sign break marker 65, and this inbuilt last or one. I don't know why they're separate, but remember that when we copied, we copied only the the break marker. So there is another thing that we can do. Let's delete this one. And how do we duplicate two objects at once? For example, what I can, what can I do? I can select this and build here and make these two objects into one. So let's take this object here, uh, edit menu, group. So let's find the, our break marker. It was a small sign, small sign break marker 65, here it is. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm grouping the this last or one object into the break marker so they are only one they are the same objects right now so now I can duplicate them and let's move it to that position Okay, I'm moving here also with the, the right mouse, right mouse button up and down so it doesn't look too close to the ground or it doesn't float in the air. And let's change the textures. 50 meter here, 50 meter on the other side. So it's done. Okay, now if I do want to separate these objects again, 
you can open the object. Remember that these three parts were original from the, the break marker object and this part here on the inside was from the that other object. I can move this to a new object as we did in the last video with the different parts, different faces and moving to, to new parts. So here we can move this to a new object and here it's called break marker 65 part 3. Uh, when I do this, when I group uh, two objects and then separate them, they, they lose some of their properties, their, their names. So it's not really a, a recommended uh, measure if you want to do it. Maybe it, was, it would be more appropriate to duplicate both objects, then group, and then move or rotate or whatever you want to do since uh, since you, you wouldn't have lost the, the properties of the original object that way. So I didn't do that. So let's uh, just group it back again and pretend this never happened. Okay, so I've made here my new object uh, based on an existing object and let's try let's try building right now a object that's not based on another one. So, GP4 Builder has a few basic shapes it can create uh, automatically uh, and very easily. We have this Add button right here on the, the left and we have Add New Object. So in this window we have a few predetermined types. types. We have a horizontal surface, a vertical surface, the Two faces crossing, which is the, the tree. All, all trees in the game are made of crossed faces. And we have box, prism, and sphere. Okay, what I what I want to, to do right now is to create a another type of break marker, that one which we, which is more common on on tracks nowadays. It's just a, a box on the on the side of the track and on the ground. So let's choose box around here and can change here all the the options to this new object. Let's call it break marker new. And for class, let's choose the same as the, the one we were, we were working. Uh, there will be there will be a lot to talk about classes later. But not right now. It's not important right now. It's just let's just let's just choose a a class that is from a, a similar similar object. Okay, the texture. Let's choose uh, fifty. Uh, material. We're not going to talk about materials right now. Okay, size and position. Uh, let's say that the new break marker. I I want to create is two meters wide. Uh, let's say half a meter long, then one meter high. And position doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have here this new break marker object. I turn the, the camera fix off so I can select it and center the camera on it so of course, because I didn't uh, specify a, a position, the position coordinates, uh, it was created at, at coordinate 000, which is right in the middle of this building, which is not really useful. So we can either move it to, to where you want, it will take a little while until we end a few clicks of the mouse or there is a quicker way to to bring the object uh, more or less to the position we want to know. It's here on the edit menu align on object. So this selected object right here we will align it 
to the, the break marker 66, which was the, the new one we created, which is at the, the 50 meter mark. And we can align on again on the on both three coordinates or X, Y, and, and Z. And we select all three of them because we right now I, I want that, that specific position. And here it is. See it's the, the same position as the, the break marker 66. And now it's much closer to where I wanted it. And now I I use the, the move the move tool to to put it where I want. Want on this side of the track. Let's move up and down. Not too much down. And here it's better. And okay, let there's one thing I didn't like about this object. It's too it's too wide so I'll use the, the scale the scale button on the let's see on y axis yes it's on y axis make it a bit thinner yeah that looks more appropriate I could also have changed the textures right here on the on the sides leave 50 Mirrors only at the front and the back. Uh, it's the same the same principle as what we have we have seen before. We just select the faces, detach the faces to a new part, move the faces to a new part, and then change the the texture of the new part. Not going to do that now. Because now let's just position it better and rotates so it's more on the line of sight to the track. No, okay, so the object is is right here at the, the position we want it. It's the a new object. Remember you had also these these different shapes, basic shapes we can create within GP4 Builder. Uh, if you want more complex shapes, more complex objects, you can either change the, the faces, the vertices uh, of the object, or you can use an external software uh, like Blender or 3ds Max, for example. Uh, any any modeling software that exports files into 3ds is useful for GP4 Builder. You can just import a 3ds file on the, the import. The file menu import so most modeling software will work with 3ds files and you can create more complex shapes and import them to, to gp4 builder i'm not going to talk too much about modeling it's not really my my area I'm not really a good modder I'll, i only do simple things so i'll keep to to do things that gp4 builder can do and if you want to to work with another software, then then you have to to learn how to use that other software and modeling in general. Not not part of this tutorial. All right. Well, there is something you might have noticed here. I'm going to to move this up again. This yellow transparent square around the just under the object. It's called the the base plane or the, the reflection plane of the of the object. You can see its coordinates right here. It's different from the from the center of the object. So I call it the, the reflection plane because the game uses this information, the, the coordinates of this, this plane to to create uh, wet, uh, wet weather reflections. So the objects will, will reflect on wet tarmac, and according to this coordinate right here. So I'm going to show in the game what happens when the this reflection plane is not on the ground, and then how we do to create it, to correct it, and also, of course, we will check if those two objects are in-game as they are in GP4 Builder. 
So I'm going to save here. I'm going to update my WAD file. Okay, the files are already set. It's uh, Montreal GP4, Montreal WAD, update. You might have also noticed that I don't really need to close GP4 Builder to update the WAD. It's not necessary. So let's check the objects in game. At first, let's do on dry weather, no rain, just to see if the objects are there as we as we made them. Alright, we have on the right our duplicated break, break marker and here on the left our floating break marker. Yeah let's Let's check now the, the behavior in in the rain. I'm going to turn reflections on high because the there is something that doesn't look right, but it, it depends on on your graphical settings. So let's check with reflections on, on high setting at first. Alright. Um, it's not really easy to see. Yeah, yeah. Here, it, yes, here you can see it. The the 50 meter break marker is reflected on the on the water. You can see it uh, around here my my right front wheel. But you can't see the, the reflection of the 50 meter floating brake marker. And now let's check what happens when reflections are set to low. can already see that the reflections are much more simpler there are, there are no there was a blurring effect that that had happened with the reflections set on high and something looks very very wrong right here you see remember when in GP4 builder that the the reflection plane was right under the object so the game understands that it must reflect the object on that plane so what you get is a mirrored image on that plane so to, to correct that we have to change the, the reflection plane so it is on the ground and not right here floating in the air uh, you can change the, the value here on the coordinates by hand Let's say here minus one something. It's still above ground, minus one point eight. That looks a, a little better. Or uh, if you don't want to, to find a coordinate by, by trial and error, you can you can just move the object until until it is at the ground. Uh, you can write down that coordinate right here, minus 1.838 and then Ctrl Z, the, the movement that's made Ctrl Z in GP4 Builder uh, undoes the, the last thing you do it doesn't really work for, for much more before that, just the last thing so, okay, we had that coordinate right here and we can type it 1.838 
and now the reflection will be correct as with the this other object around here uh, let's check it just be sure let's save then update Alright, now you can see the reflection is at the, the correct position and also you, you may have realized this that when you are testing your, your track for, for reflections in general, for behavior of the track in, in rain, in wet weather, uh, always set the reflections on low because you can see this kind of, of problem if it is if it exists all right we're going to do a little bit more of object creation but this time something that should affect our driving uh, I separate this video right here it's a video made from a fan that was attending the, the Grand Prix in 2011 and if you remember the, the history of this track, you will know that this wall was built here after the accident of Robert Kubica in 2008. They brought this wall closer to the track, and if you if you go here on the the GP4 original file, uh, remember that GP4 is from the 2001 season, so this wall was not here uh, yet. So let's try and build this wall. I'll do a wrong way first. So just to show it doesn't work and then we can explain why it doesn't work. So let's just use a the create new object uh, window. Let's create a vertical surface as I want to create a, a wall. Let's call this Jubica wall and class should be track. Uh, believe me, I will explain that later. Basically everything that is uh, part of the driving surface should be the, the track class. And let's find a good texture for our wall. Right, this one here looks good enough. Let's see if there's another. Nope, that one. Alright. Then size, let's say let's say at 50 meters and height is 1 meter it's the standard height for track barriers and create object again I didn't set a position so let's align to uh, align on track 52 what, which was the one closest here Okay, so let's position this section of the wall. Rotate it more or less, not exactly following the the shape of the track right here, the shape of the corner. I just want to to see if it works. I know it doesn't work, but I want to to make this test. So we have this wall right here. Again, update. Uh, 
and now let's check it uh, you have to wait a little longer while I make almost a, a complete lap around the track uh, let's, let's turn the rain off you don't need rain anymore That is funny. All right, we are getting close to our wall and let's go over it all right the you have all seen that uh, our wall didn't do anything and again uh, if you remember from the first video the that the gp4 file is exclusively the graphical so anything you do here at the depth at the GP4 file uh, doesn't affect uh, anything what the, your car your car does in game. It can create uh, can create curbs on the GP4 file. They won't feel like, like curbs when I drive over it. I can create bumps, visual visual bumps. They won't do anything. So it's it's very clear uh, that the GP4 file doesn't affect the the racing, the racing surface doesn't affect how the car drives. So let's delete this wall he right here. Didn't do anything. Now what I do need to 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 change is the that file. The that file is what contains the limits of the driving surface, the limits of the track and that's where I need to go to to bring that wall closer to the track. Let's open the, the that file over here. And now if you open GP4 Builder for the first time I'm going here, you will see that the Maybe this this display is not uh, exact, exactly like like mine. Uh, right here on tools preferences, I can change the the color of the wireframe here. For example, physics wire color. If I turn it to red, then the the sectors are colored red. I I set my my GP4 builder to show this wire to to black. Uh, it is useful to me. I'll just explain why. Maybe you'll do this as well. Okay, so let's change this wall. This is the section you want to change. And we can select a sector. And then this, this window right here pops up the track sector window, sector description. And here we have values for the, the left side of the track, the right side of the track. We have verge, which is this first section right here, closest to the track. We have bank, which is the, the remaining section of the track up until the, the track wall and the fence. We can change the, the width, the height and the, the angle to, to any of these elements. Uh, for example, this first column right here and right here as well is based on is for the track so right here I can change the how wide or how, how narrow the track is I'm not going to change this right now because I 
I don't want to to modify something that I, I won't be able to, to revert later. Uh, but for example, let's just change here the, the bank, which we will we'll change anyway. We can change uh, how far away the the track walls is from the from the track itself from the white line. So if I put here five meters, it's close. You can also change the the height. Example, uh, let's say two meters high. So rotating here. So now the this section of the wall is two meters above the track. And you can also change the, the angle of this of this line that, that connects the the track sector to the to the fence. Let's say here thirty degrees. But usually we leave it at zero. We only change it in special cases. You can also change the the height of the of the wall, let's say half a meter, doesn't really do. It doesn't. It's not really useful for us unless you're building older tracks that had lower, lower fences. But on on modern tracks, the the walls are standardized at one meter of height. Okay. So back to to what we want to do. We want to build this wall right here and of course we can do this by by changing the values of the the bank the width width of the bank until we are satisfied and of course we can change everything and then see if it looks good if it doesn't we change everything again so there is a, a little a little thing that I like to do when doing things like this, for example, let's, let's find a good position right here. Uh, I like to use objects that I know how big they are, how large they are, and use them as reference to to find distance, for example, pick uh, a screenshot of this video, and we know that, for example, the the cars in this season, 2001 season, they they were 1.8 meters wide. So uh, let's take here, let's take here Felipe Massa from front view to front view it's basically one car and a half This distance between the wall here and the track here, it's basically the, it's basically as wide as one car and a half, and that goes for about 2.5 meters, 2.7 to be exact, but let's use 2.5. So let's start over here, over here the the distance from or the track wall is 2.3, and from this point on, we're going to to change all these sectors to 2.5, so it looks closer to to what we wanted. And you can also use the left and right arrow keys to change sectors, so you can keep on the same the same value here and change the sectors at at a sequence and where does this wall ends let's see let's get a try to get a better shot yeah. 
Okay, this is good enough. Okay, this wall ends more or less where the track uh, where the track begins to to become straight. There is a a corner right here, and uh, the wall ends more or less at the same position at the corner. Now, uh, something I I would like to to point out is that these fan-made videos are very useful for references when you're building a a real track because uh, most of the times they show show some angles that the TV cameras the TV broadcast don't show and you get additional d details that you couldn't see on TV and they're also very very frequent the, these videos because people record everything with cell phones nowadays so for for modern races, for modern tracks, uh, fan-made videos are a, a very, very useful resource. So back to our track. Let's change this wall more or less where the quarter ends. There should be a few more sectors from here. Okay, that looks good enough. One sector more. Okay. Well, let's save that the dead file and see how it looks in the game and you have to wait me drive almost a full lap again Go a little slower on on this on this time, so you can you can better see what happens with the changes. All right, this is here our old wall, old wall. Remember that I deleted this wall on the GP4 file, but I didn't update the WAD file afterwards, so the the WAD still has the GP4 file with the wall and that's it's a very common mistake when building tracks sometimes we we change things and we forgot to update the the changed files inside the what file and we don't see the changes and oh I forgot something what's happened okay so let's see what happened here remember that we changed the the wall in the dead file can see that the track that the car stops at the at where the, the wall is and even around here you can see that you can't see but there is a wall uh, actually we could only see because the the front wing broke so this relationship between the the GP4 and the dead file is something you, we all should be very, very careful because there are some things that we change in one one file that must be changed in another. So the what we see and what we feel in the game looks the same. So how do I make the, the link between these two files? I'm going to to copy here the the dead file number eight, that is, which is the file for Montreal, and I'm going to, to paste it in the same folder as the GP4 file. So when I open this with GP4 Builder, let's find that folder, Montreal Maps, Montreal, 
if there is a gp4 file and a dat file in the same folder they will be opened together in gp4 builder as long as their their names match so montreal for that 08 or suzuka for that 17 and so on okay you can see that the that, that file is opened because of this physics tab around here select it it's basically the same as opening the the dat file and when i do work like this with the gp4 and the dat file at once i usually leave the the physics display only in wireframe and that's why I set this wireframe to black because for me it's easier to see so okay uh, what we do want now is we want this wall that we built in the dead file to appear in the gp4 file so we can see where it is and not crash into it because we could we couldn't see the the wall oh the, there is a a quick way and it's something we will be using a lot when building tracks uh, when we open the gp4 file and the dead file together we have new options here to add objects which is fence and track from that uh, let's open track from that it opens a, a new window we can create a whole track in the gp4 based on the dead file but we don't want a, a whole track for now we just want the wall so i'm going to unselect everything that's not wall let's choose a texture for the wall the same as before and okay it's track it's not bit plane and right side only i didn't change anything on the left side of the track and here first and last the, these are the the sectors that i want to to convert to to graphical objects so when i change the wall i change starting here this one is is different this one is still the same so sector 512 I have to choose here sectors 510 to 519 and last sector that I changed was 526 I chose here 520 to 529 and create track mesh and there is our new object where is it here it is now you can see that there is some some overlap because the the objects created from that in this option here are always created in these chunks of 10 so there is a little a little overlap and in some faces ended up being redundant for us oh right here on the first object let's open it and select these two faces and delete them just hit the delete button or you can use this button right here and the same on the on this part on this section in here let's choose the last faces shift and delete them and these two faces right here if you remember the video there's nothing over here it's open and you may want to delete those faces so it it looks open as well but remember that we can't go beyond the limits of the dead file so even if you delete those faces there will still be a invisible wall right here that you can cross you cannot access this area anymore because it's not on the 
it's not inside the limits of the dead file. I'm going to leave these two faces right here because I, I'm personally not a fan of having invisible faces. But again, it's, it's a matter of of preference. Okay, so let's save. Let's remember to update the what this time. The files are okay. And let's go check our new wall. While I drive yet another lap. In practice, you will not be, be doing tests so often. Once you, you get more comfortable with GP4 Builder, you do many, many tasks before testing. But it's useful to, to test your track at least once a day. So if you have any, any bugs, can notice them. Now, right? So here is our new wall. And you can see that now it matches exactly as with the, the limits of the driving surface. I cannot go through these walls anymore. So that's how we how we work with the, the that file and the GP4 file together. It's something we'll be doing a lot, this track from that, and it's basically the, the most important thing you want to do in, in track building, especially when you're building a track from, from zero, from scratch, and, and that ends up the, this, this video for today, I'm going a little longer than I had anticipated, and if everything goes correctly and they're taking my car away if everything goes correctly then uh, we will have part three next week thank you